Hey runners, it is an exciting time of year. The New York City Marathon is happening this weekend um, at the beginning of November. And it is such a great race. One of my favorite races I've ever done. Uh, not only because, well, one of the main reasons is because it's in the city of New York. And so you have this cool race experience where you run through the five boroughs, you go through one of the greatest cities in the world, and you finish up in Central Park, which is one of my favorite places. So there's all these reasons why it's a great marathon. But that being said, there are five things that I wish I would have known before I had ran the New York City Marathon. And I want to share them with you as you're sitting around in your taper or you're, you're getting nervous thinking about the race. Here are a couple things that um, would have helped me. So the first one is pay attention to the start of the race because you can ruin your whole race if you're not careful. You start the race um, on Staten Island. You take the ferry or the bus over there. And when you start the race, the first thing you do is that you have to get from Staten Island over to Brooklyn. And you do that by going up the Verrazano Bridge. And it's a cool bridge, right? It goes up and then it comes back down. Now, you are going to be so amped. You're going to be so excited for this race because it's the New York City Marathon. And trust me, you're going... They're going to be playing music. They're going to be playing New York, New York. They're going to have the mayor out there. It's going to be amped, and you will get excited, even if you're an excitable person. You're going to get excited. You're going to be surrounded by all these people that are ready to run. They've been training for so long, and you're going to want to go really, really, really fast. The problem is the first half mile of the New York City Marathon is up this bridge, and it's a decent incline. It's probably 3 to 4% at some parts but you won't notice it because you're so amped up and going so fast. And so you're effectively going to be running faster than the marathon pace up a 4% incline. And that can really affect you later in the race. So that first half mile is uphill, whether you notice it or not, do not go too fast or you will pay for it much later on in the race. The second half of that first mile is back down the bridge. And so you can have a good first mile without um, going way too fast to start. That's number one. Number two, much of the first half of the race is uneventful. You go over from Staten Island to Brooklyn, you're kind of running through Brooklyn. It's not too, it's not hilly. It's maybe a little bit of hilly, but it's kind of flat and you're seeing a lot of people and it's great. But then at mile 15, you cross from Brooklyn over to Manhattan and you go over the Queensboro Bridge. And you probably read this a bunch that it's a very eerie feeling because there's no fans on the bridge and so it's really quiet and it, it, it's crazy. But the thing that's not crazy is when you finish going over that bridge, mile 16, now you're in Manhattan and you make this turn and now you're going up First Avenue. It is going to be so loud with people. It's probably one of the loudest spots next to maybe Wesleyan and the Boston Marathon. Now this is probably louder where there's all these fans that are out there cheering for you, and you're going to get amped up again. And so you're going to be on First Avenue, you're going to have all these people cheering, and First Avenue is basically downhill. So you will run very fast that mile. And that's okay. It's okay to have a fast mile. But you need to be careful, and you don't want to go too fast. You don't want to get too carried away, because right after this amazing um, mile going down First Avenue you're going to eventually end up in the Bronx and the Bronx starts getting hilly again before you turn. And so if you go too fast here, you're gonna pay for it later on the Bronx. So don't get too excited, don't get too carried away when you hit First Avenue, when you hit First Avenue, soak it in, um, but moderate yourself. The third thing is, the hardest part of the race, I think, is miles 23 to 24. And what this looks like is, you're going down First Avenue, now you're up into the Bronx, you turn and you're coming back and you're coming now down parallel to First, down Fifth Avenue right next to Central Park. And you start doing that around mile 21 and from mile 21 to mile 24, you're going down Fifth Avenue and at mile 24, you enter the park. Mile 23 to 24, there is a nasty incline and it comes at such a horrible spot in the marathon. And you think you're so close to the finish, and you are, but you're not. And it's a really nasty incline. So the point is, as you're going down Fifth Avenue, there are some rolling kills. 
But right when you get mile 23, you're going to have to dig very hard. Because if you can dig hard for that one mile, when you get into the park, it's so much easier. There's some hills, it's some rolling, but it's net kind of downhill. It's a lot more scenic. There's a lot more enthusiasm. You can hear the finish line crowds. Get through mile 23, even when you're tired, and you can have a good race. That's number three. Number four is you're probably gonna wait a long time at the start line. It may be even longer now in the COVID era. You're gonna take the Staten Island Ferry over or a bus, and you kind of sit around in Fort Wadsworth for a long time. So plan for that. Plan for it being cold. Think about what you're gonna wear. Think about what you can take off to donate. Plan on maybe being hungry. Plan on your hydration. Know that you're gonna be sitting down for a while. Maybe bring a newspaper. Do something to keep your body uh, fueled properly to keep your body warm and also know that you don't want to get too sedentary you want to make sure you get your body active again before you run 26 miles so plan for there being a very long wait at Fort Wadsworth before beginning the marathon and the last tip is number five the last tip is and I hope no one does this but people do this every year and I don't want you to do this the last tip is do not pee off the Verrazano Bridge. Everybody does it. Sorry, a lot of people do it. They pee off the bridge. They pee on the buses. I'm talking to the men here. Uh, it's awful. Don't do it. There's no need for that. Plan it ahead of time. There's a lot of things you can go do to do better with that. Um, don't be that person. Let's stop that trend.